Question one. Under North Carolina law, what are the permissible actions a security guard can take when encountering an individual trespassing on private property? A. Physically restrain the individual and detain them until police arrive. B. Politely ask the individual to leave the premises and call law enforcement if they refuse. C. Use reasonable force to remove the individual from the property. D. Arrest the individual and transport them to the nearest police station. Correct answer. B. Politely ask the individual to leave the premises and call law enforcement if they refuse. Explanation. In North Carolina, security guards do not have the same authority as law enforcement officers. According to the North Carolina General Statutes, specifically under trespass laws, a security guard's primary responsibility when encountering a trespasser is to ask them to leave the premises. If the individual refuses, the guard should then contact law enforcement for assistance. Physically restraining, detaining, or arresting the individual is beyond the legal authority of a security guard and could result in legal consequences for both the guard and the employing company. The use of reasonable force is only permissible in situations where it is necessary to prevent harm to oneself or others and should be proportionate to the threat posed. Question 2. Mr. Smith is a security guard at a large shopping mall in Raleigh, North Carolina. During his patrol, he notices smoke coming from one of the stores. What should Mr. Smith do in this situation? A. Attempt to extinguish the fire himself using a fire extinguisher. B. Immediately call 911, provide detailed information, and assist in evacuating the area. C. Ignore the smoke and continue his patrol, assuming it is a minor issue. D. Lock the store to prevent looting and wait for the fire department to arrive. Correct answer. B. Immediately call 911, provide detailed information, and assist in evacuating the area. Explanation. In the event of a fire, the priority is to ensure the safety of all individuals in the area. Mr. Smith should immediately call 911 to report the fire, providing detailed information about the location and severity of the smoke. After alerting emergency services, he should assist in evacuating the area to ensure everyone's safety. Attempting to extinguish the fire himself could be dangerous if the fire is beyond a small, controllable size. Ignoring the smoke or locking the store could exacerbate the situation, leading to potential harm to individuals and property. Question 3. Which of the following is the most effective method for a security guard to ensure the integrity of CCTV footage in a large facility in North Carolina? A. Regularly check the cameras to ensure they are functioning properly. B. Use encrypted storage systems to prevent unauthorized access. C. Continuously monitor live footage to catch incidents as they occur. D. Rotate the location of cameras frequently to prevent them from being tampered with. Correct answer. B. Use encrypted storage systems to prevent unauthorized access. Explanation. To ensure the integrity of CCTV footage, using encrypted storage systems is crucial. Encryption helps protect the footage from unauthorized access and tampering, ensuring that the data remains secure and reliable. While regularly checking the cameras for proper function and monitoring live footage are important practices, they do not directly address the issue of data security. Rotating camera locations is impractical and does not contribute to data integrity. Encrypted storage systems comply with security industry standards and legal requirements in North Carolina, providing a robust defense against cyber threats. Question 4. Which of the following best describes the ethical obligations of a security guard in North Carolina when dealing with confidential information? A. A security guard should share all information with colleagues to ensure team awareness. B. A security guard must maintain confidentiality and only share information on a need-to-know basis. C. A security guard can disclose information to anyone as long as it seems relevant. D. A security guard should document and publicly post information about incidents to maintain transparency. Correct answer. B. A security guard must maintain confidentiality and only share information on a need-to-know basis. Explanation. Security guards in North Carolina are required to adhere to strict ethical guidelines, including maintaining the confidentiality of sensitive information. This obligation is vital to ensure the protection of privacy and the integrity of security operations. Sharing information only on a need-to-know basis prevents unauthorized access and misuse of data. Disclosing information indiscriminately or publicly posting incident details violates ethical standards and can lead to serious legal and professional consequences for the security guard and their employer.
Confidentiality is a key aspect of professionalism and ethical conduct in security services, as outlined in industry best practices and regulations. Question 5. Miss Rodriguez is a security guard at a corporate office in Charlotte, North Carolina. During her shift, she notices a suspicious package left unattended in the lobby. What should a Miss Rodriguez do in this situation? A. Ignore the package and continue her patrol, assuming it is harmless. B. Attempt to open the package to determine its contents. C. Immediately report the package to her supervisor and follow the building's emergency protocols. D. Move the package to a secure area and wait for further instructions. Correct answer. C. Immediately report the package to her supervisor and follow the building's emergency protocols. Explanation. When encountering a suspicious package, Miss Rodriguez must prioritize safety by reporting the package to her supervisor and adhering to the building's emergency protocols. This ensures that appropriate steps are taken to assess and mitigate any potential threat. Ignoring the package or attempting to open it could pose significant risks, including the possibility of encountering hazardous materials or explosive devices. Moving the package could trigger any mechanism it contains. Following established protocols helps to coordinate. A safe and effective response involving relevant authorities such as the police or bomb squad if necessary in compliance with North Carolina security regulations and risk management practices. Question 6. What is the most appropriate way for a security guard in North Carolina to handle a conflict between two employees in a workplace setting? A. Use physical force to separate the employees. B. Ignore the conflict and continue with other duties. C. Mediate the situation by listening to both parties and de-escalating the tension. D. Immediately call law enforcement to handle the situation. Correct answer. C. Mediate the situation by listening to both parties and de-escalating the tension. Explanation. Effective conflict resolution is a crucial skill for security guards. In North Carolina, a security guard should aim to mediate conflicts by listening to both parties involved and working to de-escalate the tension. This approach helps to maintain a safe and harmonious work environment without resorting to physical force or unnecessary law enforcement intervention. Ignoring the conflict could allow it to escalate, potentially leading to more severe issues. Physical force should only be used as a last resort when there is an immediate threat to safety. By mediating, the security guard demonstrates professionalism and effective communication skills, adhering to best practices in conflict management within the security industry. Question 7. What is the most effective perimeter security measure for a large industrial facility in North Carolina? A. Installing a tall fence around the property. B. Employing 24-7 security patrols. C. Implementing a combination of physical barriers, surveillance systems, and access control measures. D. Placing no trespassing signs around the property. Correct answer. C. Implementing a combination of physical barriers, surveillance systems, and access control measures. Explanation. The most effective perimeter security strategy involves a layered approach combining physical barriers, surveillance systems, and access control measures. This integrated method provides multiple lines of defense, enhancing security effectiveness. Physical barriers like fences deter unauthorized entry, surveillance systems such as CCEV monitor activity and provide evidence, and access control measures ensure only authorized individuals can enter. While a tall fence or security patrols alone can be beneficial, they are not sufficient on their own. No trespassing the signs may serve as a deterrent but offer minimal actual security. This comprehensive approach aligns with best practices and security procedures in North Carolina regulations, ensuring a robust and secure environment. Question 8. Mr. Lee, a security guard at a hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina, observes a visitor behaving aggressively towards a staff member. The visitor is making racially insensitive remarks. What should Mr. Lee do to handle this situation? A. Ignore the remarks and wait for the situation to de-escalate on its own. B. Confront the visitor aggressively to protect the staff member. C. Calmly intervene, addressing the visitor's behavior while emphasizing respect and non-discrimination, and report the incident to his supervisor. D. Remove the visitor from the premises immediately without explanation. Correct answer. C. Calmly intervene, addressing the visitor's behavior while emphasizing respect and non-discrimination, and report the incident to his supervisor. Explanation. In this situation, Mr. Lee should calmly intervene to de-escalate the aggression and address the visitor's inappropriate behavior. 
emphasizing respect and non-discrimination is crucial to maintaining a safe and inclusive environment. Ignoring the remarks could allow the situation to escalate further while confronting the visitor aggressively could lead to a more volatile situation. Removing the visitor without explanation may not resolve the underlying issue and could escalate the conflict. Reporting the incident to his supervisor ensures that the appropriate actions are taken in accordance with the hospital's policies and North Carolina's ethical guidelines for security professionals. Question 9. How should a security guard in North Carolina handle a situation where a visitor to a corporate office has a complaint about the service they received? A. Tell the visitor that it is not their responsibility and direct them to leave the premises. B. Listen to the visitor's complaint patiently and attempt to resolve the issue or direct them to the appropriate person. C. Ignore the complaint as it is not related to security. D. Advise the visitor to write an email to the company's management and avoid getting involved. Correct answer. B. Listen to the visitor's complaint patiently and attempt to resolve the issue or direct them to the appropriate person. Explanation. Providing excellent customer service is a key aspect of a security guard's duties. In North Carolina, a security guard should listen to a visitor's complaint patiently and attempt to resolve the issue if possible or direct them to the appropriate person who can help. This approach demonstrates professionalism and a commitment to positive visitor experiences. Ignoring the complaint or telling the visitor to leave reflects poorly on the organization and the security team. Advising the visitor to write an email without addressing the issue in person may seem dismissive. Handling complaints effectively is essential for maintaining a positive image and ensuring visitor satisfaction. Aligning with the customer service skills required of security professionals. Question 10. In North Carolina, under what circumstances can a security guard use physical force? A. To discipline an employee for misconduct. B. To detain a shoplifter until law enforcement arrives. C. To protect themselves or others from imminent harm. D. To prevent someone from leaving the premises if they are suspected of a crime. Correct answer. C. To protect themselves or others from imminent harm. Explanation. Under North Carolina law, security guards are only permitted to use physical force when it is necessary to protect themselves or others from imminent harm. This is in line with the principles of self-defense and defense of others, using force to discipline employees, detain shoplifters, or prevent someone from leaving the premises without an immediate threat to safety is not legally justified and could result in legal consequences. The appropriate course of action in such situations is to observe and report and involve law enforcement when necessary. This understanding is critical for security guards to ensure they act within the bounds of the law and maintain ethical standards. Question 11. Mr. Johnson, a security guard at a university in Durham, North Carolina, receives a report of a potential active shooter on campus. What should Mr. Johnson do first? A. Attempt to locate and confront the shooter. B. Lock down the nearest buildings and evacuate students. C. Call 911 and provide detailed information about the situation. D. Warn the shooter to leave the premises immediately. Correct answer. C. Call 911 and provide detailed information about the situation. Explanation. In an active shooter situation, the first priority for a security guard like Mr. Johnson is to call 911 and provide detailed information about the threat. This includes the shooter's location, description, and any other relevant details. Law enforcement and emergency responders are trained to handle such high-risk situations. Locking down buildings and evacuating students may be part of the response plan, but the initial action should be to alert authorities. Attempting to confront the shooter or warning them to leave can escalate the danger. Following established emergency response protocols ensures a coordinated and effective response, prioritizing the safety of all individuals on campus. Question 12. What is a key benefit of integrating access control systems with CCTV surveillance in a North Carolina office building? A. Reduces the need for security personnel on site. B. Ensures all employees are monitored at all times. C. Enhances security by providing real-time monitoring and recording of access points. D. Allows employees to bypass security protocols for convenience. Correct answer. C. Enhances security by providing real-time monitoring and recording of access points. Explanation. Integrating access control systems with CCTV surveillance enhances security by enabling real-time monitoring and recording of access points. 
This combination allows security personnel to verify identities, track movements, and respond quickly to unauthorized access attempts. It provides a comprehensive security solution that combines physical access control with visual verification, deterring potential security breaches, and providing valuable evidence in case of incidents. Reducing the need for security personnel or allowing employees to bypass protocols undermines security effectiveness. Continuous monitoring of all employees is impractical and raises privacy concerns. The integrated system aligns with best practices in security technology, ensuring a secure environment in compliance with North Carolina regulations. Question 13. Which of the following actions best exemplifies a security guard's duty to maintain professionalism and ethical conduct in North Carolina? A. Accepting gifts from clients for providing extra security services. B. Strictly adhering to company policies and legal guidelines while performing duties. C. Using personal judgment to bypass protocols for efficiency. D. Sharing confidential information about security measures with friends. Correct answer. B. Strictly adhering to company policies and legal guidelines while performing duties. Explanation. Maintaining professionalism and ethical conduct as a security guard involves strictly adhering to company policies and legal guidelines. This ensures that the guard's actions are legally compliant and uphold the integrity of their role. Accepting gifts from clients can create conflicts of interest and compromise impartiality. Bypassing protocols, even for efficiency, can lead to security breaches and legal issues. Sharing confidential information breaches trust and can endanger the security of the facility. Adherence to policies and laws is critical for maintaining high ethical standards and professionalism in the security industry. Question 14. A Miss Carter, a security guard at a high-rise office building in Wilmington, North Carolina, notices a fire alarm has been triggered on one of the upper floors. What should a Miss Carter do first? A. Ignore the alarm until she confirms there is a fire. B. Call the building manager to report the alarm. C. Activate the building's emergency evacuation plan and ensure occupants are safely evacuating. D. Use the elevator to check the floor where the alarm was triggered. Correct answer. C. Activate the building's emergency evacuation plan and ensure occupants are safely evacuating. Explanation. In the event of a fire alarm, the immediate priority is to ensure the safety of all occupants. A miss. Carter should activate the building's emergency evacuation plan and assist with the evacuation to ensure that everyone leaves the building safely. Ignoring the alarm or delaying action to confirm the fire can result in loss of valuable evacuation time. Using the elevator during a fire alarm is dangerous, as elevators can malfunction or be a target for smoke and fire. Coordinating a prompt and orderly evacuation is essential to minimize risk and ensure compliance with fire safety protocols and North Carolina regulations. Question 15. What is an essential step in conducting a security risk assessment for a large event in North Carolina? A. Identifying potential threats and vulnerabilities specific to the event. B. Increasing the number of security personnel without assessing specific risks. C. Relying on past event plans without modification. D. Allowing unrestricted access to all areas of the event. Correct answer. A. Identifying potential threats and vulnerabilities specific to the event. Explanation. An essential step in conducting a security risk assessment for a large event is identifying potential threats and vulnerabilities specific to that event. This involves evaluating the unique aspects of the event, such as location, attendee profile, and past incident data to determine potential risks. Simply increasing security personnel without understanding specific threats can be inefficient and ineffective. Relying on past plans without modification may overlook new or evolving risks. Allowing unrestricted access can lead to security breaches. A thorough risk assessment enables the implementation of tailored security measures, enhancing overall safety and compliance with North Carolina's security standards. Question 16. Which of the following is a recommended practice for ensuring effective patrol techniques in a large industrial facility in North Carolina? A. Staying in the same predictable pattern during patrols. B. Conducting patrols at irregular intervals. C. Skipping certain areas to save time and energy. D. Relying solely on surveillance cameras for monitoring. Correct answer. B. Conducting patrols at irregular intervals. Explanation. Inducting patrols at irregular intervals is a recommended practice for effective security in large industrial facilities. 
This approach prevents potential intruders from predicting patrol patterns, making it more challenging for them to evade detection. Staying in the same predictable pattern, option A, can allow intruders to exploit gaps in security coverage. Skipping certain areas, option C, compromises security and leaves vulnerabilities unchecked. Relying solely on surveillance cameras, option D, is insufficient as cameras have blind spots and may not detect all security breaches. Irregular patrols enhance security effectiveness and align with best practices and security techniques and procedures. Question 17. Ms. Rodriguez, a security guard at a shopping mall in Raleigh, North Carolina, encounters an irate customer who claims they were wrongly accused of shoplifting by another employee. What should Ms. Rodriguez do in this situation? A. Immediately detain the customer and call the police. B. Ignore the customer's complaint and continue patrolling. C. Listen to the customer's concerns attentively and investigate the matter objectively. D. Escalate the situation by arguing with the customer. Correct answer. C. Listen to the customer's concerns attentively and investigate the matter objectively. Explanation. In this scenario, a miss. Rodriguez should handle the situation with effective communication skills. Listening to the customer's concerns attentively, option C demonstrates empathy and professionalism, allowing Ms. Rodriguez to gather information and assess the situation objectively. Investigating the matter objectively is crucial to resolving the issue and maintaining a positive relationship with the customer. Immediately detaining the customer without proper investigation, option A, can escalate the situation and may result in legal repercussions. Ignoring the customer's complaint, option B, or escalating the situation through argumentation, option D, is unprofessional and can damage the mall's reputation. Effective communication skills are essential for security guards to handle conflicts and complaints professionally. Question 18. Which of the following is a key step in conducting a security risk assessment for a corporate office building in North Carolina? A. Ignoring potential security threats to avoid causing panic among employees. B. Conducting the assessment based solely on past incidents without considering current vulnerabilities. C. Identifying vulnerabilities and implementing appropriate measures to mitigate risks. D. Conducting the assessment without involving building occupants or management. Correct answer. C. Identifying vulnerabilities and implementing appropriate measures to mitigate risks. Explanation. Conducting a security risk assessment involves identifying vulnerabilities and implementing appropriate measures to mitigate risks. This proactive approach helps safeguard the corporate office building and its occupants from potential security threats. Ignoring potential threats, option A, can leave the building vulnerable to security breaches and endanger occupants. Relying solely on past incidents, option B, may overlook new or evolving risks. Involving building occupants and management in the assessment process enhances collaboration and ensures that security measures align with the organization's needs and objectives. Identifying vulnerabilities and implementing mitigation measures is a fundamental aspect of risk assessment and management in North Carolina's security industry. Question 19. In North Carolina, what are the legal implications for a security guard who uses excessive force during an arrest day? The security guard may face criminal charges and civil lawsuits. B. The security guard will receive a commendation for taking decisive action. C. The security guard will be promoted for demonstrating authority. D. The security guard's actions will be overlooked due to the urgency of the situation. Correct answer. A. The security guard may face criminal charges and civil lawsuits. Explanation. Using excessive force during an arrest can have severe legal consequences for a security guard in North Carolina. According to state laws and regulations, security guards have a duty to use only reasonable force when making an arrest or detaining a suspect. Excessive force violates the suspect's rights and can result in criminal charges such as assault, as well as civil lawsuits for damages. Security guards must be aware of the legal limitations on the use of force and prioritize escalation techniques whenever possible to avoid legal liability and maintain public trust. Promoting or overlooking such actions would undermine the rule of law and professional standards in the security industry. Question 20. Mr. Thompson, a security guard at a concert venue in Charlotte, North Carolina observes a disturbance in the crowd escalating into a physical altercation. What should Mr. Thompson do in this situation? A. Intervene immediately using physical force to separate the individuals involved. B. Ignore the altercation and continue monitoring the rest of the venue. 
C. Call for backup and approach the altercation cautiously, attempting to escalate the situation verbally. D. Evacuate the venue without addressing the altercation. Correct answer. C. Call for backup and approach the altercation cautiously, attempting to escalate the situation verbally. Explanation. In this scenario, Mr. Thompson should prioritize the safety of all concircoers by calling for backup and cautiously approaching the altercation. Using physical force, option A, should be a last resort and only used when necessary to prevent harm. Ignoring the altercation, option B, could lead to further escalation and compromise the safety of attendees. Evacuating the venue without addressing the altercation, option D, may not be feasible or necessary if the situation can be resolved with proper intervention. Attempting to escalate the situation verbally while waiting for backup aligns with crisis management protocols and emphasizes the importance of effective communication and teamwork in maintaining security at public events. Question 21. How should a security guard in North Carolina handle a situation where an individual is causing a disturbance in a retail store? A. Physically restrain the individual and remove them from the store. B. Ignore the individual and continue monitoring the store. C. Approach the individual calmly and attempt to address their concerns or grievances. D. Call law enforcement immediately without engaging with the individual. Correct answer. C. Approach the individual calmly and attempt to address their concerns or grievances. Explanation. When dealing with a disturbance in a retail store, a security guard in North Carolina should approach the individual calmly and attempt to address their concerns or grievances. Effective communication and conflict resolution skills are essential in escalating the situation and maintaining a safe environment for customers and employees. Physically restraining the individual, option A, should only be considered as a last resort if there is an immediate threat to safety. Ignoring the individual, option B, could lead to further escalation of the disturbance. Calling law enforcement, option D, may be necessary in certain situations, but engaging with the individual and attempting to resolve the issue peacefully should be the initial response. This approach reflects the importance of customer service skills in the security profession and promotes positive interactions within the community. Question 22. In North Carolina, what ethical considerations should a security guard keep in mind when interacting with individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds? A. Apply stereotypes to quickly assess cultural behaviors. B. Treat everyone with respect and sensitivity to cultural differences. C. Assume all individuals share the same cultural norms. D. Discriminate against individuals based on cultural differences. Correct answer. B. Treat everyone with respect and sensitivity to cultural differences. Explanation. When interacting with individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds in North Carolina, security guards should prioritize treating everyone with respect and sensitivity to cultural differences. It's essential to avoid making assumptions or applying stereotypes, options A and C, as these can lead to misunderstandings and potentially discriminatory behavior. Discriminating against individuals based on cultural differences, option D, violates ethical standards and can have legal consequences. By embracing cultural diversity and demonstrating cultural awareness, security guards can foster positive relationships and promote inclusivity within their communities, which is crucial for maintaining trust and ensuring effective security services. Question 23. Why is ongoing training and professional development important for security guards in North Carolina? A. To ensure compliance with state regulations and industry standards. B. To avoid legal liability and potential lawsuits. C. To maintain skills and stay updated on emerging threats and technologies. D. To increase job security without improving performance. Correct answer. C. To maintain skills and stay updated on emerging threats and technologies. Explanation. Ongoing training and professional development are crucial for security guards in North Carolina to maintain their skills and stay updated on emerging threats and technologies. Security threats and best practices evolve over time, making continuous education essential for adapting to new challenges and ensuring effective security measures. While compliance with state regulations and industry standards, option A, is important, ongoing training goes beyond mere compliance by equipping security guards with the knowledge and skills needed to address dynamic security environments. Additionally, investing in professional development enhances job performance and contributes to career advancement opportunities, demonstrating a commitment to excellence in the security industry. Question 24. What is the primary purpose of conducting a security risk assessment for a commercial property in North Carolina? 
A. To identify potential security threats and vulnerabilities. B. To increase insurance premiums for the property owner. C. To create unnecessary panic among tenants and visitors. D. To delegate security responsibilities to law enforcement agencies. Correct answer. A. To identify potential security threats and vulnerabilities. Explanation. The primary purpose of conducting a security risk assessment for a commercial property in North Carolina is to identify potential security threats and vulnerabilities. By systematically evaluating the property's security measures, access points, and surrounding environment, security professionals can assess the likelihood and potential impact of various threats such as theft, vandalism, or unauthorized access. This allows property owners and security teams to implement appropriate security measures and mitigation strategies to reduce risks and enhance safety. While insurance considerations, option B, may be a factor in some cases, the main goal of a risk assessment is to proactively manage security risks and protect people and assets. Creating panic among tenants and visitors, option C, or delegating security responsibilities to law enforcement agencies, option D, would be counterproductive and undermine the purpose of the risk assessment. Question 25. What is a primary responsibility of a security guard in North Carolina concerning emergency response procedures? A. Provide medical treatment to injured individuals. B. Ensure the safety and security of individuals during emergencies. C. Coordinate with law enforcement agencies without taking any action. D. Document emergency situations for future reference. Correct answer. B. Ensure the safety and security of individuals during emergencies. Explanation. A primary responsibility of a security guard in North Carolina concerning emergency response procedures is to ensure the safety and security of individuals during emergencies. This includes implementing emergency protocols, assisting with evacuations, and providing support to individuals in distress. While providing medical treatment, option A may be part of emergency response duties, the primary focus is on maintaining safety and security. Simply coordinating with law enforcement agencies, option C, without taking action may not be sufficient to address immediate threats. Documenting emergency situations, option D, is important for post-incident analysis but should not take precedence over ensuring the safety of individuals during emergencies. Question 26. Ms. Garcia, a security guard at a warehouse in Fayetteville, North Carolina, notices a group of individuals attempting to breach the perimeter fence. What should Ms. Garcia do in this situation? A. Confront the individuals aggressively to prevent the breach. B. Call for backup and observe the individuals from a safe distance. C. Immediately activate the alarm and notify law enforcement. D. Approach the individuals calmly and ask them to leave the premises. Correct answer. C. Immediately activate the alarm and notify law enforcement. Explanation. When encountering individuals attempting to breach the perimeter fence of a warehouse, Ms. Garcia should prioritize safety and security by immediately activating the alarm and notifying law enforcement. This action alerts other security personnel and authorities, initiating a rapid response to address the security threat, confronting the individuals aggressively. Option A. Could escalate the situation and jeopardize Ms. Garcia's safety. Observing from a safe distance, option B, may provide valuable information but may delay the response to the breach. Asking the individuals to leave calmly, option D, may not be effective in deterring their actions or preventing the breach. Activating the alarm and involving law enforcement align with established security procedures for handling perimeter breaches. Question 27. What authority do security guards in North Carolina have regarding detaining individuals suspected of committing a crime? A. Security guards have unlimited authority to detain anyone suspected of a crime. B. Security guards can only detain individuals with a warrant issued by a judge. C. Security guards can detain individuals suspected of a crime under certain conditions outlined in state law. D. Security guards must refrain from detaining individuals and leave apprehension to law enforcement agencies. Correct answer. C. Security guards can detain individuals suspected of a crime under certain conditions outlined in state law. Explanation. In North Carolina, security guards have limited authority to detain individuals suspected of committing a crime under certain conditions outlined in state law. 
This authority is typically granted when a security guard witnesses a crime being committed or has reasonable suspicion that an individual has committed a crime on the premises they are responsible for protecting. However, security guards must exercise caution and ensure that any detention is conducted in accordance with legal guidelines to avoid allegations of false imprisonment or excessive use of force. Security guards do not have unlimited authority to detain individuals, nor do they require a warrant issued by a judge options A and B. While security guards can detain individuals under certain circumstances, they must coordinate with law enforcement agencies for further investigation and apprehension. Option D. Question 20. Why is effective communication important for security guards in North Carolina? A. To intimidate individuals and assert authority. B. To establish positive relationships with clients, colleagues, and the public. C. To gossip about colleagues and share confidential information. D, to avoid interacting with others and remain isolated. Correct answer. B, to establish positive relationships with clients, colleagues, and the public. Explanation. Effective communication is crucial for security guards in North Carolina to establish positive relationships with clients, colleagues, and the public. By communicating clearly and professionally, security guards can build trust and confidence, which are essential for maintaining a safe and secure environment. Intimidating individuals or gossiping about colleagues, options A and C, undermines professionalism and can lead to conflicts or mistrust. Avoiding interactions altogether, option D, isolates security guards and hinders their ability to address security concerns effectively. Positive communication fosters collaboration, enhances teamwork, and contributes to overall job satisfaction and effectiveness in the security industry. Question 29. What is the purpose of implementing preventive measures based on a security risk assessment in North Carolina? A. To increase insurance premiums for the property owner. B. To eliminate all security threats and vulnerabilities. C. To mitigate risks and minimize the likelihood of security incidents. D. To ignore potential security risks and liabilities. Correct answer. C. To mitigate risks and minimize the likelihood of security incidents. Explanation. The purpose of implementing preventive measures based on a security risk assessment in North Carolina is to mitigate risks and minimize the likelihood of security incidents. By identifying potential threats and vulnerabilities through risk assessment, security professionals can develop and implement measures to reduce or eliminate those risks. These preventive measures may include installing security cameras, improving access control systems, or implementing training programs for staff, increasing insurance premiums, option A, is not the primary goal of risk assessment and may not directly address security concerns. While eliminating all security threats and vulnerabilities, option B, is ideal. It is often not feasible, making risk mitigation. A more realistic approach, ignoring potential security risks, option D, leaves properties vulnerable to incidents and liabilities, highlighting the importance of proactive risk management. Question 30. What is a key principle of effective incident reporting and documentation for security guards in North Carolina? A. Falsifying information to protect the reputation of the security company. B. Providing vague descriptions to avoid legal complications. C. Recording accurate and detailed information about incidents. D. Delaying reporting to avoid administrative tasks. Correct answer. C. Recording accurate and detailed information about incidents. Explanation. A key principle of effective incident reporting and documentation for security guards in North Carolina is recording accurate and detailed information about incidents. This includes documenting the date, time, location, individuals involved, and a thorough description of what occurred. Accurate reporting is essential for legal and liability purposes, as well as for identifying patterns of behavior or security vulnerabilities. Falsifying information, option A, undermines the integrity of incident reports and can lead to legal consequences. Providing vague descriptions, option B, may obscure critical details needed for investigations or resolutions. Delaying reporting, option D, can compromise the integrity of incident information and hinder timely response or follow-up actions. Recording accurate and detailed information ensures transparency, accountability, and effective security management.